Hi, everybody, and welcome to the latest episode of Fidelis Fun Features, where we showcase some of the more advanced features of Abacus in a fun and interesting way. Today, Dr. Rob Hurlston, co-founder and chief engineer of Fidelis, will be getting us ready for Thanksgiving by performing a transient thermal analysis to virtually defrost and roast our Thanksgiving turkey. We hope you enjoy. Have a safe and happy turkey day. Hi there everybody. So a little bit of background on the method that we'll be using before we get started today as always. So this time we'll be running a transient thermal analysis and this is necessary when we want to study the effects of thermal interactions and a steady state solution is incapable of capturing the physics that we're interested in. Notably that's because the effect of time on temperature is neglected in that type of analysis. All right, so now we can get started with the modeling process. And first of all, we actually need to define some model attributes since we are running a, a transient thermal analysis. We need to set absolute zero temperature to be minus 273 degrees Celsius. And the Stefan Boltzmann constant as 5.6 e to the minus 11. So now we're going to make some parts and we're going to make, first of all, the, the turkey body. And that's going to be around 1,000 millimeters in size, just so that we have a good canvas. And so this is going to be, again, a free freehand sketch, kind of like a lot of the other stuff we've been doing. But we, we do have a, a, a decent idea of how big it needs to be. So looking for something around 100 millimeters in radius and maybe um, around 250 to 300 millimeters in height. So something like this would be appropriate. And then the inside of the turkey is going to be model two or the cavity, should I say, so that we don't just have a, a solid block like we would in a real turkey. And so if we add in the vinyl line, we'll be able to revolve this around 360 degrees. And we should get something that looks like a turkey body. Okay. Secondly, we're going to want to model a turkey leg. And so we're going to call this part leg. It's going to be again a revolution. And we need this one to be kind of a leg of around 20, oops, 20 millimeters in radius and something like about 200 millimeters long and about 60 millimeters in uh, radius uh, where the meat of the bone is. And then we add the final line, revolve again around 360 degrees and we should have something that looks somewhat like a turkey leg. Finally, we're going to make uh, a tray to bake the turkey on. So we're going to just call this tray. This is going to be a shell part, and it's going to be a planar shell. And we're going to go with a, sh a tray that is 400, oops, 400 by 350 millimeters. And so that's that done. So before we carry on any further, what we're going to do is assemble the part and we're actually going to combine the leg and the turkey together to make uh, a single part that is the whole turkey. So we need to move the leg. Um, the X direction, we're going to move it uh, 100. The y direction, minus 50. And in the Z direction, minus 50. And that's going to place it somewhere reasonable to where it should be. We're also going to add a second leg. Of course, turkeys have two legs, and um, we're going to move that one, and we're going to say that one needs to go negative 100 in the X, negative 50 in the Y, and oops, so negative 100 in the X, negative 50 in the Y, and negative 50 in the Z, and so now we've got something that looks somewhat like a turkey. We're going to combine these parts together, essentially, to make a new part, and that's going to be called turkey. And that's going to combine these three parts together. And so now we have one single part named turkey. A final thing we want to do to the turkey is actually kind of chop it so that the base 
is flat and so it can sit on the tray a little bit more realistically and so what we're going to do here is we're going to create a plane that is going to be based on the x y plane and be offset by 80 millimeters and that's going to give us a spot where we can cut this turkey up now we can make a cut extrude on this plane and uh, use one of these lines here and basically what we're going to do is extrude a cut from oops no not like that we're going to extrude a cut downwards through the turkey and so basically what we're going to have is now a flat bottom which is going to sit on the tray a little bit more realistically finally we need to cut the uh, turkey where we're going to define a bone versus meat and that's just purely for aesthetics in the end so it looks more like a turkey so we're going to create a point of reference to cut from so it's going to be about there and then we're going to say we want to cut normal to an edge we're going to cut normal to this edge and now we have a turkey uh, meat and turkey bone just like a cartoon turkey. The next job is to create some properties, of course. So first of all, we're going to make the turkey meat named turkey. This is going to have a density of uh, 1.05 e to the minus 9, and that is in tonnes per millimetre cubed. We need to, of course, make some thermal properties. So thermal conductivity is going to be 0.41 in milliwatts per millimeter degree C. And finally, we need specific heat, and that will be uh, 2.8 E to the nine. And that unit is millijoules per tonny degree C. Again, the same thing, we're gonna make the steel plate or the steel cooking pan. So density of steel will be 7.85 e minus 9 oops we're going to use conductivity of 47.7 and we're going to use specific heat here of 4.7 e now we're ready to prescribe the properties of the turkey uh, so we're going to first of all make some sections we're going to call one turkey and we're going to say it is a solid and that's going to be based on the turkey material we're going to create another section called bone this is again purely just so it looks different color that's again just going to be based on the turkey though and then finally we're going to create a section named steel and that's actually going to be a sh uh, shell and it is going to be just say two millimeters thick and based on steel and so now we have all of our materials created we can prescribe the materials here to the turkey so we're going to use turkey for this one we're going to use bone for the two ends of the legs so we're just going to call this bone and then we also need to prescribe the material for the tray and that's going to be steel okay next part is to define the step here oh actually we need to still move the tray into a reasonable spot so what we're going to do with this tray actually spin it round about the z-axis because it doesn't look quite right there so we've got that now and then we need to drop it down by we know 80 millimeters since that was our offset um we also need to move it across by uh, 170 millimeters and so and probably backwards a little bit maybe 50 or so millimeters so we're going to say um, x is 175 we're going to move it in the y-axis by 100 and we're going to move it down by 80 and that should put our turkey perfectly into position on the tray okay next we're going to define some steps and so we're going to do two steps in this analysis firstly we're going to do a refrigeration step from uh, frozen to defrosted and so we're going to call that defrost it's going to be a, a thermal heat transfer step it's transient 
our time is actually going to be, I think we're going to say four days, which is 345,600 seconds. Uh, we're going to want to do a fixed number of increments and we're just going to do 100 increments with a check in about every hour during the defrosting process. We're also going to create another step called uh, roast and that's for us cooking the turkey. Again, it's going to be transient heat transfer. This one's going to be 18,000 seconds. So that is uh, five hours. And again, we're going to say a fixed number of 100 increments and we're going to check in about every oh, three minutes or so. All right, so now our two steps are defined. We're going to move on to the interaction phase. And first of all, we're going to tie the turkey to the sheet. And so that just means we need to select the tray as uh, the brown surface and the base of the turkey. And we're going to tie them together so that they uh, will share at the same temperature. We're then going to introduce some um, film coefficients to the analysis. And first of all, we're going to do uh, the fridge one, which we're going to say is um, 0 0.001 milliwatt per millimeter squared degree C which is kind of still air, which you would find in a fridge, and the fridge temperature is four degrees Celsius. We're then gonna go ahead and define a new uh, interaction, and that's gonna be roasting the turkey. Again, it's gonna be film coefficient, and this time we're going to say 0 0.01, so we're gonna have some convection um, in the oven, whether it's a convection oven or it's just natural convection within the oven. Um, the temperature is 176 degrees Celsius is the setting of our oven. And so one thing we should do is check our interaction manager and actually switch off the original um, interaction uh, for the fridge once we put it into the oven. Finally, we need to define a predefined field, which is going to be the temperature to start with in the analysis. So it goes in the initial conditions, it's gonna be temperature and that's going to be negative 18 degrees Celsius, which is the typical temperature that you'll find within a freezer. Finally, we need to mesh these components. So we got the tray, we're gonna mesh with, need to make sure we use heat transfer elements. We're gonna use, I think about, uh, I don't know, five millimeter mesh here. That's fine. Then with the turkey, Let's see, we need to use tet elements. Oops, get the whole thing. We're gonna use some tet elements. And we need to make sure that they are again, heat transfer type elements. So down here, and we're going to give a mesh size of about, I don't know, call it five millimeters and see how that looks. Don't want to have too many elements here. I mean, that might be too many, so we can drop this down to maybe 10 millimeter elements. And that gives us something more reasonable, 60 odd thousand elements. Okay, so we're fine with that. Uh, at this point, we can create the job and we're gonna call this Turkey. Okay, we're gonna use some parallelization as always, just to make the job go quicker. And we're gonna run the job. Okay, so now we've run the analysis and you can see that we've got our turkey here in the results viewer. First of all, we're going to show the turkey in its true colors. So I think the bones look okay, but I think we need to get rid of the red and green. So what we're first of all going to do is change the colors of the sections and we're going to use uh, for the tray, we're going to use like a steel color. And then for the turkey itself, we want some sort of a, a dark kind of... Uh, brownish color, maybe something like that. And now we've got something that looks a lot more like a turkey. Okay, so there's a fun part over with. So what we might want to do to start with is animate the uh, temperature change. But first of all, what we want to do is say, well, we only want to look at the defrost first. So we're going to turn the roast off. We're going to take a look at the temperature. So that's NT11. 
and then we can animate that temperature changing and we probably want to slow that down just a little bit for now and so there we go we can see the temperature changing we can cut this in half and take a look through the inside of the meat and see the temperature and as we can expect sort of the thickest part of the meat is the part that takes longest to defrost another thing we might want to do is take a look at the xy data in kind of the the most central point of the bird and so to do that we want to look at unique nodal temperature and we're going to select i don't know a node somewhere here maybe and then we can plot the temperature against time and as we can see it takes us about half of our half of our defrosting time so we did i think we said four days so it took about two days to get thoroughly defrosted so that's reasonably in line with what you'd expect from what this is, which is about a 17 or 15 to 17 pound turkey. Um, so now we can go back to our animation and maybe we can take a look at the roasting part. So if we say, okay, and then animate the roasting. So we can see now we're starting to heat from sort of four degrees all the way up to about 160 degrees. And what we're really aiming for inside the turkey here is about 75 to 80 degrees Celsius in the coolest part. So again, we can use a, an XY plot feature and we can use probably the same node. So or the same area. So something about there. And we want to look at temperature. So we plot that and we can see that we hit our uh 75 let's call it 80 degrees after about two and a half to three hours something around here so again that's right in line with the uh recommended time for cooking a turkey and so you can see that we did actually manage to simulate the turkey reasonably well so that's the end of this uh tutorial Hope hopefully it was useful to you guys uh learning to do transient thermal analysis and we wish you all a very happy Thanksgiving and look forward to our Christmas edition next time.